Okay, so this will pick up from our previous video um, when we did the um, linear regression equation on the calculator. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the residuals, what they are, and what a residual plot is, and how to do a few things on the calculator. Um, so basically, if I'm going to go back and use the same data. So what we had in the previous video was uh, the carbs and uh, grams of fat for various hamburgers at McDonald's. We had seven of them. So um, we want to go ahead and get those entered into our list, into our calculator. So let's just get the, the equation again. I know we did that in the video before, but um, you can see they're in there. To remember to get into here, we're just going to hit stat and, uh, and edit. And just kind of type the values in, make sure there are no extra values in there or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> and we can go ahead and, and get the equation real quick just to refresh stat over to calculate. Um, I'm going to do option 8 here just so we do the y-intercept plus um, b times the slope. And um, again, I want to go L1, L2. If you're using the old calculators, you do L1, comma L2. And let's go ahead and store the equation. Make sure the equation is stored in y1, so that's vars um, over to y vars, and then into function and y1. <clears throat> okay, and then we'll go ahead down and hit calculate again and get our equation. So that was the equation we said in the last video. Again, the A value is the y-intercept. Um, the B value is the uh, is the slope. So just in case if we wanted to interpret those real quick, just to make sure, um, we would say that for, uh, you know, the, the y-intercept being negative 46 means basically if something had, you know, what we're, I can't remember what we were using for x. We were using the uh, the carbs. Okay, that was our x value, and the y value was the fat. Um, so basically, when since this y-intercept is um, negative 46, that's basically saying if, if okay, in our picture again here, we were doing fat for the y-values, carbs for the um, x-values. <clears throat> so the y-intercept is going to be where we're starting at. Okay, remember the other formula, predicted y, they use b0 plus b1x. And what we just found, the, the a value is actually what they're calling b0. That's like the, the initial starting value. So in this case, it's actually a negative number. Um, so we're actually starting down here somewhere, and then our slope being positive is going to slowly increase. Um, but what it's basically saying is if something had no carbs, that would be the predicted fat. Um, and it's kind of not meaningful because you know, we know we're not going to have negative number of uh, grams fat. And the other thing why this isn't very meaningful is because our data was all positive values. Like they were all kind of around here. And what we did was we actually extrapolated and we went outside of the range. Okay, because again, our data was maybe up in here, positive numbers. If you go outside of that area, we don't know that the prediction line is going to fit, and you really don't want to use it. <clears throat> but if you're ever asked to interpret it, it's basically about what would the whatever the y value is be if the x value were zero. Okay, so that's what's in there. Um, the next part, the uh, the slope. Okay, again, that's like the, the mx. Okay, we're using b, or the the AP formula uses b1. Um, so what that's saying is, again, for um, slope is always change in y over change in x. Okay, so basically in this case, for each increase in the x value, okay, if you, if you add one gram of carbs, for each one gram increase of carbs, um, the predicted, okay, this is all about a, a prediction, Okay, we're predicting y values, we're predicting the grams of fat. The predicted grams of fat, <clears throat> excuse me, will increase um, by whatever the slope is, by, by 1.83. Okay, so, so again, we're, we have to be specific, we have to use context from the problem, um, but it really is just a change in y over a change in x. Okay, that, that's all that it really is. Um, so each increase in the x direction, so if we went over one gram, we would go up 1.83 in the y direction. Okay, so that's a little interpreting slope and intercept. There's always some questions about that. Um, but this video, I wanted to focus again on the, um, the residuals. Okay, so let's talk about that real quick. Let me get this ink off here. And basically what residuals are, okay, I guess I could have left that off, or we can go back to the other picture here. Um, I believe I have a picture. No, no picture. Okay, so anyways, what, what residuals are, are basically when you make your scatter plot, 
Okay, and we have a bunch of data. Let's just say we have a few points. And we used the calculator to get the linear regression equation, so we just did that. Um, most of the time, the points are not going to be directly on the line. Okay, so for, for instance, this point was up here. The equation predicted its value would be there. So that small distance from here to here, that distance is going to be a residual. Okay, so, so the actual formula for a residual, it's the actual y minus what the line predicted it would be. Okay, so if we remember <clears throat> the order there, actual minus predicted a, p, in that order, because with subtracting, it is, it is uh, important which order we subtracted, so AP statistics, um, actual minus predicted. So in, in symbols, again, the actual Y is just Y, and the predicted Y is Y hat, okay? And that will give you the residual. So each of these points has a residual value. Okay, this one has some distance there, this one has some distance there, this one has a little distance, this one has a little distance, this one has a distance, this one really close. Okay, the points under the line, their residual is actually a negative number because the actual value, okay, like for instance right there, is less than what the predicted line said it would be. Okay, so actual minus predicted would be negative. Now some of them will be positive, and the sum of the residuals will always be zero. Okay, that's what makes the, the line be the best fit. Okay, that's part of it. It actually deals with squaring those numbers and finding that as a minimum. Um, but uh, it, it will work out that they will all, the sum will always be zero. So on your calculator, if you want to find those, we need to get all of these predicted y's from the equation. There's a couple ways to do that. I'll show you two ways. Um, <clears throat> we already have our data in. Okay, so we have the data in. We have our actual y values listed in L2 right now. So one way to do this is, is to get all of the predicted Y's and put them into list three. Okay, and predicted Y's, if you remember, come from taking each of the X values. So these are my X values. These are the actual Y's, so these are the predicted Y's. But the, the predicteds come from taking each X value and plugging it into the equation we got. Okay, and that equation, we stored it in the Y equals screen, so it's in there. Okay, if you didn't put that y1 in there, you could you could write the equation down and just man, manually go into y equals and type it in. You just need the equation in there to do this. So in order to take each x value and plug it in to this equation here, there's a shortcut on your calculator. If you go back to the lists and you go over to L3 and actually go up to the top there and highlight L3, what we want to do, if you remember uh, function notation, kind of like f of x notation, that's what we're going to do. Our function is the thing in y1. And all of our x values is everything in list 1. Okay, so it's going to be y1 of l1. And it's going to then put each of those individual x values. It's going to take the 31, put it in for x. So put the 33, put it in for x. And it'll do that for all of them into the equation. So we just need to get back to that y1 like we did before, which is vars over the y vars function, y1. And then just like f of x, this is y1 of l1, so second 1. And that should take every single thing in L1 and plug them in as the X value. And it's going to give us a bunch of predicted values. Okay, so those are the Y coordinates that are actually on the line. Okay, notice they're, they're somewhat close. Okay, our first one, the first row there, the actual value was 9. The line predicted is 10.9. Okay, so we, we were a little bit um, low. <clears throat> or we predicted a little bit high, actually. And you can see all the way down, they're fairly close. Um, but to get the, uh, the residuals now, we said the residuals are the actual y's minus the predicted y's. Okay. Well, that's what we have in L2 and L3. So I'm just going to do a little formula up here, L2 minus L3. Okay. It'll find each one of these differences, so you don't have to go and do a bunch of subtraction problems. Same way, go over to L4, highlight the, the, the title top row there, type in your formula. L2, actuals, minus L3, predicteds, and it's going to go ahead and find each one of those for us. <coughs> Okay, and now this list, if you wanted to just verify that everything's right, the sum of this list should be zero. Okay, because again, those are the residuals. If you want to check it out real quick, just to make sure, we could do one variable stats on that list. Um, we don't do the one variable stats, get the sum of list four. That's where my residuals are. Let's just make sure, let's see if that sum is actually zero. And it kind of gives you that E negative. 
Okay, so this is what I'm checking, is that is that zero? And basically it is, if you remember the negative, uh, E negative 12 means take that decimal point and move it 12 times to the left. So I mean, this thing's like point one, two, three, four. I'm running out of space here, but basically <laughs> pretty close to zero, right? The E negative 12 is the scientific notation. So, um, so again, that sum is very, very close to zero is just a, a touch off because of the rounding and everything. Okay, so we did one other thing then with these residuals. Um, so again, these are in my list now. If we uh, if we looked back at our equation, um, let's do that real quick. We had the equation in there from before, um, the linear regression equation. Let me just do this real quick. Oops, I want to do list one and list two. So double check your lists. I used list four for something else, so it actually put that in there for some reason. Um, but my x's were L1, my y's were L2. The equation again was here with our R value, like we talked about in the last video, being 0.775. So we would say that's a you know a moderate to strong positive correlation. Um, if we looked at this at the stat plot, just to kind of see what was going on, we may have done this in the other video too. Um, I want to make a scatter plot first type. X's were list one. My Ys were in list two. This is just the original data I'm making a plot of, okay? Not the not the residuals yet. <clears throat> if I go zoom nine, get my window, we can kind of see there's our points, there's the line. The linear model seems to fit, you know, somewhat well. Um, the R value indicated was fairly strong, positive correlation. Um, one other thing you can check though is to, is what's called a residual plot, where basically, basically you're just gonna take this graph right here and just kind of tilt it a little bit so that, the um, you'll get, we're going to have an axis like this, and that's going to be the um, x-axis. The y values are going to be the residuals. So basically, even before we do anything, I can see this point has a little negative residual. This one has a little negative. This was a little negative, a little positive, little negative, big positive, medium negative. Okay, and what we want to see is I want to have some points on each side of the line. Okay, if, if they're kind of mixed around randomly, that's good. That means our line fit them well, because somewhere above, somewhere below. So what we're going to do is make a, a new scatter plot, and we're just going to make the y-axis be the residuals that we just found. And we're going to look for we're, no pattern. Like we don't want to see a, a curve or anything like that. So, so let's go back. Remember in our in our list here, L4. Those are the residuals. Those are the ones whose sum is zero. So if we make a scatter plot of just our original x's, which are L1, with the residuals we found in L4. So let's go back to stat plot, make sure it's on. Same type, that's the scatter plot. I want my y values now to be the residuals. So one way is, again, we have those in list four. If I do a zoom stat on that, <clears throat> okay, here's my residual plot. I see a little piece of the line still. That's actually irrelevant. We don't need that line there at all. Um, but what we should be able to see is, again, there's there's no clear pattern. There's not like, this doesn't look like a, a quadratic or, you know, it's not, you know, all above or all below. It's kind of just randomly mixed, okay? And with a small amount of data points, it's it's not as easy to see. But, again, I see kind of just a random thing going on there. So that would lead me to believe since this is not showing any pattern, the original data is actually linear, okay? Now, there was one other shortcut I want to show you guys with the, as far as getting the residuals, you don't need to do the L3 step necessarily unless you actually need the predicted values. Let's say as long as your equation is stored in Y1, that's key. If the equation is in there, and let's say all you have is L1 and L2. Okay, so let's say these are empty. Okay, you can actually get the residuals in one step by going up here and then um, second stat, it'll say list up there you'll see um, a way to get list one, list two, all that stuff. And at the at the bottom, it might be seven or it might be eight on some calculators. Um, if you just hit residual down there, it's gonna hit seven. And, and you'll see that it's titling this list residuals. It's gonna know to basically plug the X values in, do the subtraction problem for you. It's kind of doing everything for you. And those are the same values that we had in L4 just a few minutes ago. Okay, so that should walk you through a couple things on the calculator. Um, hopefully that helps. And that's it.